Welcome everybody to this video. In this video, I'm gonna show you five tips that I use in Lightburn software. Uh, these tips come in handy. I use them pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis. And at some point with every job, I use at least one of them. So uh, let me load up a customer job here and I will start with tip number one. So the first tip I wanna show you is offset shapes. Offset shapes basically creates kind of like a stroke outline around whatever you select. So if you selected this whole design like I have selected here and you click that button on the left middle side called offset shapes, you'll notice that it creates kind of an outline of the entire design. So once you select offset shapes, you'll notice a dialog box that has a couple things you can change. The first being the distance of that outline. You could bring it closer or farther depending. You could also sharpen up those edges around your design. So you could do uh, corner being your sharpest. Uh, you could do bevel or just normal, which gives you nice smooth lines. Uh, you could also change where you want that contour line to be. So if you do inwards, the offset edges will be on the inside, or you could do both to where it's on the outside and the inside. For a design like this, it's got a ton of detail, it's tightly packed, so what makes the most sense and happens to be the only one that works is by doing an outward offset shape, and that'll give a contour line on the outside of it. So just to give you an example, since I can't show you with this design, I'm going to create a circle and then go ahead and hit that offset shapes with it selected. Um, and here's what it looks like on the inside, and here's what it looks like on the outside. So pretty self-explanatory, but just so you get a visual, um, there's an example right there. So that pretty much wraps up offset shapes. I'm gonna go ahead and continue this design by showing you what to do to make it a keychain. And that leads us into tip number two, and that is welding shapes. So here I have that same circle selected, and what I wanna do is create an eye hole uh, so I can put keychain hardware through. So with both of those outline layers selected, I'm gonna go ahead and click weld all shapes together. And what that does is kind of merges both of those lines uh, so that way it becomes one. So if you go ahead and play around with the other functions on the left-hand side, you'll notice that they do an array of different merging. So the best way to do it is just test it out yourself. You can see um, by me selecting through these different functions, you can see what each one does. So for this specific design, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it on weld all shapes and that'll give me the bridge I need to add the eye hole. So here's where I would place it, probably make it a little bit bigger to fit that hardware. And this is essentially how I go about making my keychain designs. So for my next example, I want to show you what it's like to weld paths on text, especially when I'm going about making a stamp. For stamps, you generally want to offset the shapes um, very thin so that way there's no room for ink to stick to the extra rubber material. Um, the problem with text though is because sometimes it's so thin, when you create that outline, it, it doesn't connect to the, the text that's below it. And so we need to find a way to weld those together so that way when it's cut out, I can glue it to a block and it still stays centered and spaced correctly. So after I have the outline selected here, I am gonna go in and kind of just get rid of some of the smaller paths that I don't want to be cut out. And then I'm gonna show you how to weld this all together so that way it stays as one unit. So go ahead and grab your pencil tool and make sure you have your cut line selected. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw um, full on squares that connect the letters together. Um, and, and once you have those, we're gonna group them up and once they're all selected, go ahead and weld all pieces together. And you'll notice that now it's one complete outline layer, including the pieces that are like inside the letters too. Um, so for stamps just like this, uh, I just duplicate that cut line and then I make it a fill layer because you wanna do inverted engraving for stamps and, and that's it. So for the next tip, I am gonna show you how to do curved edges using anchor points. 
Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that design so I can show you an example. Uh, what I'm gonna start with is by drawing a square and then centering my design over it. And I wanna show you what different edges we can do here. So um, what I wanna do is once you have the square selected after you've drawn it, you'll notice on the bottom left hand side of your toolbar, there's something called curve edges. Um, below the curve edges button, there is something you could change the actual curve size to. So right there, you'll see that's a pretty small corner right there. So here's something that's a little bit bigger. And you could play around with different sizes depending on your design. So I'm going to go through and kind of show you a variation of sizes so you kind of get an idea. So here we go. We got the, you know, next size up. Let's go ahead and make something, you know, real small. And then... Um, Let's see, let's try something really large. So there we go, we got about a 30 right there. So you could really kind of actually get some really curved edges on this just by selecting it. Um, super simple, it's a good tip to know. It's really easy to make curved edges if you wanna do that. Um, in case you have something tighter, you'll actually come across this and it stumped me the first time. You can't do every size for every corner. So you'll notice right here with that 30 selected, I can't, I can't curve the edges there, so don't worry about that. Um, just keep going down in size until you can make it work. Obviously with the angle of the edge, um, you know, you could only go so big, so um, just play around with it. You'll get familiar with what is allowed and what is it. And even if you don't get familiar, Lightburn's gonna remind you real fast. So moving on to tip number four, we are gonna show you how to do perforated cutting. Um, perforated cutting is super cool. I'm really thankful that this is actually built into Lightburn software. But basically, if you wanted to create an outline and have your laser cut most of it, but leave certain sections so that way you can kind of just punch out it afterwards, um, here's how you're gonna do it. So you're gonna start by selecting your outline layer where you're gonna do the cutting. And you'll notice that there's a perforation mode on your first window right there. Um, you know, there's a distance you could change for cut and where it's gonna skip. The skip is kind of like the amount of material it's gonna leave behind, uh, which will determine how easy or hard it is for it to punch out. So for something like three millimeter wood, uh, generally I'll do like five millimeters that'll cut and then skip like a 0.1. I want it really easy to punch out sometimes wood can start to splinter a little bit if you don't um you know if you if you have too much material left over and then it takes too much force to, to pop out so um, you could actually see i'm just going to show you here in the preview that's where it skips is those lines right there where they have gaps right there um, that's the part that's the material that's going to be left over so you could tell i mean it's just going to be super easy to punch out once you have uh your design set So the last tip I want to show you is how to optimize cut time. Uh, you'll notice in the preview window down below there is a time estimate and we're going to show you how to shave off seconds, minutes, hours, over time um, just by changing a few settings. So when you open up your layer dialog you'll notice that there is fill by group, fill individually or fill all at the same time. Um, so the best way to kind of figure out if it's going to save time or not is go through each one of them before you start your job and see where your best timing is. Um, you'll, you'll catch on pretty quick on, you know, figuring out for yourself what's going to be the best without even having to see the preview window, but you're never going to get to that point until you start checking before every job. And the sooner you learn how to do this tip, the more time you'll end up saving throughout the lifespan of, you know, your laser cutting experience. Uh, another simple way to just cut down on your cut time is by simply bringing everything closer together. Uh, by doing this, you're making it so that your laser head has, you know, less length to travel, meaning it's just going to save you time and save the machine time for finishing a job. So you'll notice once I have everything tucked in close together, nice and tight, um, we're at optimal time. I think it's, it's under nine minutes or eight and a half or so. Um, and this is the best we've gotten so far. So super simple trick. Just bring everything closer together and you'll save, you know, some time.